is your foe, still your love far from me. You have been so, so good to me. When I felt no worth, you paid it all for me. You have been so, so kind. a whisper, you breathe in me a new song, you take me back, and I remember the joy of my first love. Salvation, 
days will be my song. How can I contain? I will not contain this love. Grace will be my song. How can I contain? I will not contain this love. And I'll shout out, I will sing of your love for me. As you reach out, I can feel you all around. Oh, I'll shout out, I will sing of your love for me. As you reach out, I can feel you all around. Oh, I'll shout out, I will sing of your love for me. As you reach out, I can feel you all around. Oh, grace will be my song. How can I contain? I will not contain this love. Grace will be my song. How can I contain? I will not contain this love. And I'll shout out. I will sing of your love for me As you reach out, I can feel you all around Oh, I'll shout out I will sing of your love for me As you reach out, I can feel you all around Oh, I'll shout out I will sing of your love for me As you reach out I can feel you all around, oh. Grace will be my song. How can I contain? I will not contain this love. Grace will be my song. How can I contain? I will not contain this love. can I contain? I will not contain this love. Grace will be my song. How can I contain? I will not contain this Thank you, God. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your abounding love. That no matter where we are or what we're doing or how dark this world may seem or how dark our life may seem, but you are there. You are there embracing us with love, showing us mercy and grace when we do not deserve it. And we give great thanks and praise to you, God, for that. In Jesus' mighty name, we all said amen. And amen. morning everybody one more time nice I hope everybody's doing great this week I get the wonderful opportunity to share a little bit that's been on my heart um, these last few weeks I've just been praying about it thinking about it what what is it God this almighty word that you would have me share with these great people that they would be touched and and be changed forever for always because of something great I'm going to say out of my mouth. No, I didn't say that. <laughs> um, no, nah, um, God's been speaking to me um, a lot about how I, how I view and how I fight my battles. And, and how do you react when you feel like you're being attacked, right? This day and age, the world's going to, <laughs> lack of a better word, hell in a handbasket. And uh, 
they don't get any better. The Bible clearly tells us that it's supposed to get worse and worse and worse. So how do we react as Christians? What are we supposed to do? Well, the Bible tells us time and time again to, to rejoice and give God praise. No matter what's going on in your life, he's there for you, right? Well, I couldn't think of a better person, and Austin can tell you firsthand. My favorite character in the Bible is Paul because he went through so much junk and was still able to uh, keep it together. <laughs> and a lot of times, that's all we can do. That's all we can do as Christians, as adults, as believers, is just hold on and let God take care of it because I know that I can't do it. And if you can, please meet me after service and let me know how. Please. So from the time we're small until we're getting older, there's, there's moments of affliction or the enemy coming against us or things coming against us. And and the defining part of your character, what, what builds you as a, as a person before you're even a Christian is how you, how you choose to fight that. What do you let that thing do to you? Do you let that adversity destroy you, tear you down, belittle you, change who you think you are, change what you think you can do? Or do you allow that affliction or that battle to build you, to help you grow, to help you learn? Maybe even to uh, help you guide someone else, right? If I've done anything right in this world, I hope that I prepare my kids for at least one bad thing. One really bad thing, I hope I prepared my kids <laughs> to be able to, to not have to deal with it the way I did or maybe, maybe have a better chance of beating it, right? As parents in here, can you raise your hand? And I hope, I hope I helped them with one. Well, from the time we're kids, for instance, when we're learning to walk, the first time we fall down, do we just stop? No. Because as a child, you don't know defeat. As a child, you only know if I keep trying, it's going to work. Whether it's walking or burning a house down. They're going to keep trying <laughs> until, some, until, until they're stopped. But as a kid... We're encouraged by our parents. We're encouraged when we fall down, they pick us back up and they tell us, keep walking, keep trying. I couldn't recall one time out of the four kids I have yelling at them and telling them not to try to walk. Right? We want our kids to walk just like God wants us to walk. And whenever we stumble or we fall, God's not there saying, oh, I hope you can get up. No, he's there saying, come on, get up. You can do it. I have faith in you. He's cheering you on. I hope you can do it. I know you can do it. Just keep trying. That's a lesson that, that we learn young, but we forget quick. When we get older and when we deal with life struggles, not being able to pay rent or pay your mortgage, or maybe you can't put the gas in your car to go on vacation. Maybe that's, that's what's holding you up. Maybe that's what's frustrating you. Should you just go and quit your job? Just, drive, just let your car roll off a cliff because you can't afford to put gas in it? I've thought about it, yeah. <laughs> but no, you don't do that. You have to persevere. And as a parent, you know even more you have to persevere. There's people that are depending on you, right? There's people that are relying on you to succeed. Well, when, when I felt like God had told me this, it blew my mind. So everybody hold on to your seat. What if everything that you go through in life... God is preparing you to help someone else succeed. Pull yourself out of the middle. You're not the main character. What if what you're going through is God preparing you to help someone else? So how you overcome that battle that you're going through right now, that's what's going to prepare you to help someone else. Just like I've had time and time again, people there that God put in my life to help me overcome a struggle, to help me overcome what, what's going on in my life, things that, that I had wrong with me. And if it wasn't for those people going through garbage and coming out on the other side, they would have had no way to help me because I was a hot mess.
the Apostle Paul shows how he does the same thing, right? Time and time again, we read about him writing to churches. Was he writing to churches from, let's say, uh, Cancun, Mexico? Laying out on the beach, having a good old time, just chilling? Nah, most of the time he was either hungry, starving, half dead, three-quarter dead, 98% dead, being beaten for something that he didn't do, or being beaten because he was too nice. Anybody can relate to that? How many times have you been beaten or persecuted because you're too nice? The world views that as being a doormat, right? Jesus calls that being a saint. At some point, we have to realize that we're, we're not of this world, that we can't be a part of this world, because if we try to define ourselves with what the world defines people as, Either we're going to lose our identity and who Christ tells us we are, or we're going to become some hybrid version of the world and the church, and that ain't good. The Apostle Paul showed a good attitude in the face of adversity. He was in prison, and not for committing a crime, but for obeying God's call on his life. I think, Phil, you've heard me say it before. If the devil's fighting you, you need to smile. If you're having a horrible week, you need to smile because the devil's not going to fight someone that's not an enemy. The harder you lean into God, the more that you try to do for God, with God, the more the devil is going to be very upset. I told the youth this one day, and <laughs> don't hate me, please. Um, I told them, I said, when you wake up in the morning, I want you to be like, God, please show me how to tick the devil off. I want to make him have a bad day. I want him to throw everything he's got at me and me make him mad, right? You've heard killing with kindness. I'm sure you have. But Jesus did it better than anybody else. He had the devil tore up. And that's what I want to do. When I wake up in the morning, I ask God, God, please show me how to make the devil have a bad day. Because he's already ruined so many of my days. When Paul was in prison for obeying God's word, God's call, he didn't lose sight of what was going on. He didn't lose hope. Right? It gave him confidence. He took what I said to heart. If the devil's coming against me, i got to be doing something right. He ain't going to fight you for nothing. He wrote a letter to the Philippians where he says, Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. If you could throw up that first scripture. You're way too good. But yeah, rejoice in the Lord always. I say it again, rejoice. When he says always, he's not talking about when you're having a good day. You know, let me have a good way of expressing it. Has anybody ever been on a vacation in their entire life ever? I don't care if it was to the pawn shop. Just, you know, so you went somewhere, you, and it may just be me. I don't know. Have you ever cleaned your house before you went on vacation? Oh, man, that's a good feeling, right? As an adult, you've had this long vacation or short vacation. You're so stressed out. You get all these kids packed back into a car, and they're fighting and slinging snacks all over the car and everything else, and you're like, oh, I can't do this pull into the driveway, and and you get, get to the house, right? You unlock the door, you're like, man, I just need to relax from this vacation. This is ridiculous. You open the door and the house is clean. I think that that initial moment of emotion may be what like, getting to heaven might feel like a little bit. Because I'm telling you, there is like pure joy and happiness when you open that door. Because I've opened the door also to the alternative. And I'm like, this is worse than the vacation. <laughs> this is terrible. This is never going to end. Everybody go to bed right now. Dad, it's 1 o'clock. Go to bed. But it's how that joy, always be joyful. That moment, that's what he's saying. He's like, I know you're going to have bad times. I know you're going to have situations where 
you're going to be struggling. The devil's going to be coming against you. You just have bad day after bad day after bad day after bad day. I know I've told this story before, and I'm sure that y'all y'all heard it a time or two. Whenever I was going to my car early in the morning, I had woke up early. I was going to the gym. I hadn't been in a little while, if you can't tell. But I was going to the gym, and my car wouldn't start. And it's like 4.30, 5 o'clock in the morning. And I'm like, man, come on. So I go to start my car. Well, I can't find any jumper cables. So I go get in my truck to go to the store. I didn't even want to drive my truck because I barely had enough money for gas. That car is way better on gas. I have to go all the way to the gas station and hope to the Lord Jesus that they're open. They weren't open. I came back home. Got in the car. I'm like, oh, it's a stick shift. I'm going to roll down a hill. I'm going to start it. It's going to be great. It's going to be a good time. So good. Didn't happen. Get all the way down the hill, get stuck in a ditch. It's a pretty steep hill going up, all concrete. I get out and I go to walk out, step on a piece of gravel, roll my ankle, slam and hit the pavement. Door open, no ding because there's no power to the car. There's no lights anywhere. It's dark. I'm all bloodied up, scuffed up. I just roll over on my back. There's two ways I could respond to this. Set that car on fire or try to get up and get over it. So neighbor not far from the house, laying there pitch black, five o'clock in the morning. I start angrily singing worship music out loud with no music, you know, acapella. It was horrendous. I was probably waking up the dead if I could. I probably had animals going the opposite direction from me. Possibly coming to me thinking I'm an injured animal. Screaming worship music. Because I knew at that moment I had to decide, what kind of day am I about to have? Is this what I'm going to let define my day? I can't. I was so, <laughs> was so empty and lost and broken right in that moment. I was like, if I let this take a hold of me, my day's gone. I might as well call out of work. Because I'm going to be... I'm going to be terrible to deal with. But in that moment, something clicked in my brain. How many times are we going through these situations where we just need God? We need to rely on God. Just like Paul did. He's sitting in prison, chained up on the floor. And what's the first thing he tells this church? Hey, guys, I know I might be having a bad day. I don't know if y'all are all at home eating chips and salsa, but I'm in a prison right now. But if y'all could, just be happy all the time. As a church, how do you, how do you respond to that? Like, I, know you're, I know you're in prison, but our day's worse than yours. My car didn't start. You can go to the next one. He says, I am not saying this because I am in need for I have learned to be content with whatever the circumstances. He's not saying to be happy. He was talking to the church. I'm not saying that everything's going to be peachy and amazing and loving and awesome. He's telling the church that you have to be happy. You have to, you have to be thankful for whatever you have at that moment. If you can't do that, then how are you going to be happy whenever you have less? If you can't be happy with $20 in your pocket, how are you going to praise God with $5 in your pocket? you got to be prepared to praise God when you have nothing. I have been so broke before that I had negative money. And what that means is there was nothing in there and I still owed people. <laughs> That's a great feeling. So good. Almost like walking into a clean house. I'm kidding. But Paul, he dealt with a lot. He dealt with so much garbage. Paul said that he cared for and burdened for the church. So much so that, that whenever he was going through all of his trials, and we're just speaking of one small trial that he went through, so he cared so much to spread Jesus, to spread God's love, to, to show the church how to behave and how to act, that, that he wrote all of these letters encouraging the church in a horrible place. 
in an absolute horrible place. And this is where you go into what you're going through is going to enable you to help someone going through terrible times, right? Paul could praise God in a prison. So whenever he wasn't in prison and he was walking on the streets and he was teaching people about Jesus and loving people, he was able to tell them how great God was and mean it. He wasn't selling them some half-hearted lesson, some half-hearted God or Messiah. He was giving them raw, real, I've been beaten, I've been broken, I've been hungry, and God has still got me through. I'm still here, I'm still standing or sitting. Sorry, I was supposed to bring my iPad. My wife called me on the way to church today. Well, I was actually in the parking lot. She goes, hey, I just want to let you know you don't have your iPad. I said, thanks. It was awesome. So, I have to struggle trying to read this. Please forgive me. These, these moments and these times that I'm talking about, they, they produce in you not only, not only the knowledge to be able to help someone, but it builds your faith. You're stronger as a Christian when you rely on God and you come through the other side. It doesn't just teach you something. How many people have met somebody that was supposed to know something and was still pretty dumb? I'm standing right up here. <laughs> just because you've been through something doesn't always mean that you're smart, right? Some people could go through terrible things time and time again and never learn anything and then hopefully my siblings and or my children have seen me go through stuff and they're the kind of people that learn from other people's mistakes that's what I try to teach them to be anyways as a Christian that's kind of where we need to be right we may or may not have a giant book full of problems and adversity and different stories of how horrible life could be you know over here talking about no gas when there's people getting beheaded for it. There's people still to this day getting that. We're blessed. We are blessed. And I genuinely mean that. We are blessed. But there are people out there that need Jesus and need help more than us. On your worst day, they need it more than us. On your absolute worst day, moment they need him and that's what God's trying to prepare us for that's what Paul was trying to prepare us for is that no matter how bad it gets God is good God is faithful he's going to carry you through how many lessons do you think we would miss if Paul hadn't have been like that how many times has there been in your life where you were able to encourage somebody because of something that you've been through I know I have. I know that I've, I've been able to do that, and God has allowed me to do that, but it was because I chose to overcome that obstacle. Because I can tell you right now, if I had done what I wanted to do when I fell out of that car, I would have not been up here telling you about it. Because it would have been the exact opposite. Can you throw up that last scripture for me? Paul writing to the Corinthians, he says, Are they servants of Christ? I am out of my mind to talk like this. I am more, I have worked much harder, been in prison more frequently, been flogged more severely, and been exposed to death again and again. Five times I received from the Jews the 40 lashes minus one. Three times I was beaten with rods. Once I was pelted with stones. Three times I was shipwrecked. I spent a night and a day in the open sea. I have been constantly on the move. I have been in danger from rivers, in danger from bandits, in danger from my fellow Jews, and in danger from the Gentiles. In danger in the city and in danger in the country. In danger at sea and in danger from false believers. I have labored and toiled, and have often gone without sleep. I have known hunger and thirst, and have gotten, and have gone often without food. 
I have been cold and naked. Besides everything else I face daily, the pressure of my concern for all the churches. Who is weak, and I do not feel weak? Who is led into sin, and I do not and I inwardly burn? My eyes weren't working too well. Right here, look at that whole list that Paul gave, right? I have not done any of those things. I think maybe been hungry, but that was just because I went wait a couple extra hours between eating. I ain't never had to go through any of that. I ain't never been flogged, stoned, beaten, whipped, shipwrecked. I don't even know how that would feel other than watching Castaway. And he had a volleyball. If Paul could go through all of that, if Paul could go through all of that, how much of a chance do we get? How much of a chance has God given us to succeed? If he can do that, I can have a bad day. I could have a bad year. How long would you have to live? I'm not calling anyone out that considers yourself old. That's why I'm not going to point at anybody. But of the people that are more seasoned than me, can you please raise your hand if you've ever been flogged or stoned? You're doing great. You have a great chance of that never happening. All I'm trying to do up here today is encourage you. I want to encourage you. We're going to have bad days. And it's going to be crap. It's going to be miserable. You're going to want to get out of here. You're going to want to leave here so that you can go eat lunch. God's there. God's got us. And I encourage you to hold true. I keep wanting to point at my phone like it's a Bible, and I'm definitely not going to point at my phone and say, everybody just hold on dear to this. You already do that. I do. Hold on dear to God's word, God's promises. I'm not telling you to know every word in the Bible verbatim. That's crazy. I would never be able to do that. But read daily, even if it's one verse. There are tools in there to help you overcome these terrible problems. Like I said in the beginning, it's only going to get worse. The light at the end of the tunnel is up there. Not down here. Hold on to that promise. And maybe along that way, maybe along the way of holding on to that promise, you might be able to pull people up. You might be able to help someone out of the dirt, out of the mud, out of the, out of the grime, out of the, the toils of every day. Maybe you'll be able to introduce them to Jesus. And for those of you here or listening online or, or wherever that's struggling with that, he can help. I've been at the bottom. I've been at the end. I've wanted to give up. I've dealt with depression, alcoholism, and drug abuse multiple times in my life. If he can pull me out of that, he can do anything. He can save you from whatever problem that you're facing. I don't care how big you think it is. It's small to him. So as I stand up here today, with everyone, bow your head, close your eyes. God, thank you for your promises. Thank you for your son who came here and died on a cross, paving a way for us to know you and know your love. Thank you for salvation, God. And thank you for the Holy Spirit that comforts us and guides us in our times of need. God, right now, if if anyone is here or listening online that's having these struggles and having these difficulties, I pray right now, God, that you would, you would set them free from whatever bondage, whatever pain, whatever struggle that they have going on in their life, that it will not be there anymore, that they'll have the ability to overcome it because of Christ Jesus who died for us. For those of you that are believers and that, that do believe and lean on God, we have bad times too. This message is for you to to. God, please be with them. Show them your strength. Show them that they don't have to do it alone. 
that you're right there beside them in love, step by step. God, we give you thanks for all that you do for us. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Thank you all for listening to me ramble. I always keep it really short. Um, I do want to let you know we're not going to have youth tonight. We're going to uh, be picking back up on that next week. So I encourage you, if you know any youth that want to come or that need a way, just get with me. Maybe we can work something out. I don't want somebody not to come because of not being able to, to drive here or get a ride. Um, Austin, Denise, I sure love all of you, but they needed a break from me. I love all of you guys. I hope you all all get to enjoy a three-day weekend. And if you don't, I'm sorry. All right, guys, I love all of you all. I hope you all have a great lunch and a great day. You have something to say? I just want to give a brief reminder. In less than one week, in less than one week, we will be free. Yeah. So I know that if Foster's here, he'd give us the reminder. He's not, and God bless him. They're having a good time. They had family come.